we're going to take the next little while to talk through four core areas of Flutter, starting with designing stunning apps with Flutter. Then we're going to talk about developing Flutter apps. Then we're going to talk about connecting Flutter to online services. And lastly, we're going to talk about the process of releasing apps. So let's start with design. And to start this section off, I'm joined by Will Lush, who's an engineer on the material design team. Will, great to see you. Thanks, Tim. I'm so excited to tell you today why I believe that Flutter is the perfect platform for executing pixel-perfect designs. But first, let's take a step back. Right now, good design is expensive, especially on mobile. It takes extra engineering resources to execute, and what you get is rarely what you want. The designer hands us something detailed and beautiful, but we push back on what makes it special. Branded menu button, it's easier to use a stock icon. Custom map bar, we could, but it's complex. Custom tabs, we ran out of time. We end up compromising on the details that make our experience excellent and end up shipping something that's just good enough, that has the major features we need, but none of the finesse. So with the best of intentions, we say we'll get to it later. But let's be honest, later never comes. The tickets sit in our backlog, and we never delete them because that would be admitting defeat. But what gets me so excited about Flutter is that we can break that cycle. We can ship the app we really want with detail and polish and fewer of those painful compromises. Flutter's architecture is designed for building beautiful custom UI. Flutter's main goal is to make building polished custom app interfaces a faster, more delightful experience for designers and developers. Firstly, Flutter is powerful enough to draw anything designers dream up. It's built on Skia, the open source graphics engine used by Adobe, Chrome, and Amazon Kindle. We can get print quality custom typography without needing to dive down to low level frameworks like Core Text. There's easy to access APIs for character spacing and word spacing. Its animation and motion framework is more finely tunable than anything I've ever seen on mobile. We've looked closely at what developers need to execute complex, high fidelity designs on the devices of today and put it at their fingertips instead of burying it in obscure, hard-to-learn frameworks. And we've used these APIs to make a component library expressing opinionated and flexible design standards. Material components for Flutter. These are reusable widgets designed by the material design team here at Google. If you haven't heard, we released a major expansion of material, making the system more flexible and expressive. And the Flutter team has done a great job implementing the material components to our specifications. So we can get a beautifully themed experience out of the box. On Flutter, material is beautiful. It's a platform powerful enough to build anything our, our designers dream up. It's also extensible. We can extend the existing material components to support almost anything, and often much more easily than in traditional code. But maybe most impressively, Material is fast. I actually built these screens on the subway on my way to work in about half an hour. The layout system in Flutter is just that good. I believe Material Design is the most expressive and flexible cross-platform design system you could need. But Flutter is powerful enough to implement any design system. So Material Components isn't the only library that comes with Flutter. You also get Cupertino a faithful implementation of Apple's iOS design language. Cupertino gives us action sheets, alerts, segment controls, sliders, nav bars, switches, over two dozen widgets that look like they came right out of UIKit, but 100% open source. And coming from traditional iOS, that's mind-blowing. If I have a question about a text field, I can go look at its source code. And you can't do that with private APIs. 
Cupertino even plays well with material components on iOS. So I automatically get iOS style controls when I run a material app on an iPhone. But it doesn't matter if you're using a design system or a completely custom UI. Flutter is faster than traditional mobile coding. In fact, we've seen teams make up to 3x gains in velocity using Flutter. That could dramatically alter what your team can accomplish. And we've already seen some of you do amazing things with Flutter. This is Reflectly, an award-winning app on iOS and Android, and it's built with Flutter. I'd like to invite designer developer Jacob Christensen, founder at Reflectly, to join me on stage. Jacob? Thank you so much, Will. So, hello, everyone. My name is Jacob. I am a co-founder at Reflectly, uh, where I also head up uh, UX UI design as well as front-end development. Now, Reflectly is what we call a conversation-based journal. Now, what that means is that everyday users open up the app and go through a series of questions, which helps them lock down their day. However, instead of just presenting them with like a blank screen and they fill in some text, like you would in a traditional journal, we prompt them with very specific UI interactions, such as rating their day with a little smiley face slider or selecting an icon that best represented well, how the day went. Now, all of this is then bundled together into what we call a story. Now, um, users can then go back in their journal and reread the story to see what were they up to and how did they actually feel. However, we can also show them how they've been progressing over time, but give them aggregated statistics. Now, all of this makes Reflectly understandable and easy to use. However, what's even more important to us is we're seeing it bringing immense value to our users. We're actually seeing users become happier over time by using Reflectly, which of course is amazing. Now, Reflectly is just around the corner from hitting that 1 million user mark globally, all of whom are able to use this amazing app built entirely in Flutter. That's really great, Jacob. I want to ask you a couple questions. Um, was this your first Flutter app? Yes, it was. And how many engineers were working on it? So just me for the front end. And how long did it take you? So uh, the first uh, line of Flutter was written in March. And with the learning curve, we got this completed in two and a half months. OK, that's crazy. Wow. All right, great job, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. Jacob Christensen. I really believe we might be entering a new age, one in which we don't tell designers that we're going to be getting to something later or soon. But now, Flutter makes executing beautiful designs easy. And with that, I'd like to turn things back over to Tim. Tim? So. You've heard how the architecture of Flutter makes it possible for designers and developers to work together to create beautiful UI. And again, this is where Flutter stands out, as you saw with Philip's demo in the Big History app. It's the composition of text, video, graphics, and UI controls, whether from Flutter or the underlying platform, applying animations and transformations onto a single hardware accelerated surface that makes Flutter such a powerful platform and a powerful addition to the toolkits of designers and developers. But while Flutter bridges the gap to designers, we think there's an opportunity to give creative professionals the same boost to productivity that Stateful Hot Ro Reload gives to developers. And we've uh, been working with a company uh, who've been uh, investing in this space for a little while. And uh, they've got some tools that I think you might be interested to see. So I want to invite Two Dimensions onto the stage. Thanks, oh, thank you. I'm a designer. And what I really like about Flutter is how easy it makes it for us to create beautiful applications. Now, as a designer, I always have big plans for what I'm going to build. I love coming up with new interactions, slick animations, epic lens flares, you name it. That said, once I've got these concepts down, I then have to figure out how I'm going to actually code all of this awesome stuff. And that's when I think, how cool would it be if I had a twin 
that could code it all for me. Well, I have good news. Today, we are launching a clone program. <laughs> Just kidding. I am indeed lucky to have a twin, and he's an engineer. This is Luigi, by the way. But thanks to our new tool and Flutter, you won't need a complimentary twin like us. We are Two Dimensions, and we're here today to tell you guys about a new product we built called Flare. Flare is a vector design and runtime animation tool that exports directly to Flutter. Guido and I built Flare so that designers like ourselves and developers can work in parallel. If you're a designer, the biggest advantage to Flare is that you, don't need to that you do get to work directly on the assets that run in your final app. That means you don't need to design in one app, animate in another app, um, redline your mockups, write up a 100-page guide to basically help your engineering team redo all the work that you already did. Everything that you design in Flare is exactly what runs in Flutter. Not only does this open up your entire team to be able to quickly iterate, but it also allows you to make great design a part of your process from the very beginning right up until the completion of your app. So we have a demo, and we're going to show you how all of this works. So what Guido's going to pull up here is a Flutter list view that's hooked up to a Flare pull down refresh animation. Now what you can see is as Guido pulls the list down, there's a zoom animation that progresses with the movement of the list. And at the same time, there are a couple different idle animations, like the Earth spinning, the stars twinkling, and some of the comets that are shooting by that are blended on top. And this is done regardless of where Guido's finger is placed or where the list view is placed. This is all animated in different layers. So this would all be pretty difficult to achieve with a video or an image sequence. Instead, these are all animations that I created. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what the file looks like in Flare. So this is our space demo. And these are all the animations I created for this app. There's this pull animation, which Luigi has hooked up to basically progress as you're pulling your finger. And as you can see, um, the Earth isn't actually rotating. The clouds and continents aren't moving. And that's because there's a separate animation called idle here. And that's where all that stuff is happening. Now, if I blend these two animations together, you see that all that stuff happens together. Um, the other animations we have here are just a simple success state, which basically happens when the user has pulled their finger far enough. It just lets the user know, you know something happened, success. And then it goes into this loading indeterminate state where it's basically waiting for the loading to finish. That's it. That's all I created in Flare. And Luigi hooked that all up to work. So it only takes a few lines of code to get this actually running in Flutter. There are a bunch of widgets that we provide that make it really easy to do this. And once this is done, Guido can keep iterating on this design completely by himself. That's a good point. So going back to the simulator here, now that I'm actually seeing this running here, I kind of think that the moon spinning actually looks sort of boring. I think we could do something a little more exciting with it. And that's a good opportunity to show you guys how easily I can update that and iterate on it without taking up any of Luigi's time. So I'm going to switch over to Flare. And I'm in my loading animation already. I'm going to grab the moon orbit keyframes here and just hit Delete. Now, what I actually want to do is have the moon kind of move from, the, from a side view. I want it to move like this. So I'm going to set a keyframe at the start here for the position. I'm going to set the same keyframe at the end. And then right about in the middle here, I'm going to put negative 60 to inverse it. So now we've got the movement. I'm going to add just some easing to it. And I want this to be kind of playful, so I'm going to go for a bit of an exaggerated curve. I already set up the draw order so that it switches. And you can see that we've got our new orbit here. Now, I'm going to do just one last thing to really sell this animation. And that's to add just a little bit of scale to make this look cartoony. So I'm going to add two keyframes first for our normal scale. And then right about here, where the moon is passing in front of the Earth, I'm going to double our x. And you'll see that this creates just a little bit of playfulness. All right. I think that's good enough for now. Let's see how I get this back into Flutter. I'm going to hit Export. 
switch over to our assets and just drag and drop our new asset over the old one, hit replace. And then I switch over to VS Code, do a hot restart because we need to reload our asset. And we've got my new moon animation in there. I was, able, I was able to do all of that without taking up any of Luigi's time. And I can keep iterating on this as long as I want. So Flare is really good at UI components as well as graphical animations like you just saw. This is an expand collapse toggle animation that Guido built for the History of Everything app. This is a broken heart that shows up in the favorites list when it's empty. But where Flare really shines is at building complex animation systems that are really easy to control. We have full support for bones, constraints, and inverse kinematics. One of the animations you may have seen in the history of everything is this Amelia Earhart. She is controlled by one set of constraints that allow moving her eyes, her nose, her mouth, and her face without animating all of those properties individually. Instead, an animator can really quickly keyframe just one node or have a developer control it in Flutter and have all these constraints work there as well. In this other example, Guido can move the, bone for, the hip bone for this character, and you can see that her feet and her legs bend and move in the correct direction, as you'd expect. And that's thanks to the inverse kinematics that we support. So <clears throat> as you can see, Flare removes the churn between design and development. And it really allows you to make great design a fundamental part of your process. I'm really excited to announce that Flare is launching today on twodimensions.com, and it's free. If you're a developer, you'll be able to find a bunch of assets on twodimensions.com that other designers have already shared and made available on there. In fact, all of the assets for the History of Everything app are available for free on twodimensions.com. We're really, really excited to see that Flutter is going 1.0 today. And we can't wait to see how you'll use Flare with it. Thank you. Wow. Thanks, Luigi. Thanks, Guido. So that is Flare. Flare bridges the gap between designers and developers. Designers are at last able to fully participate from beginning to end in the development of an app, creating interactive content that can evolve along with the rest of the app. 